every time you hit render. Part 2 will be up within 24 hours of this going live. You liar! You're a liar! You liar. You're a liar and a manipulator. You liar! You're a liar and you're mean! What can I say? You got me. What is up YouTube? It's Terrence, and here I am with part 2 of this video. It took a while, but it's finally here. So, let's get into it. Here we are in Fusion, we're going to hit Control Space and get ourselves the Loader node. And then we're going to go and select the file that we exported, hit Open. You're going to see that we get this one EXR file. You can see here it only shows the Alpha channel. But, like I explained in a short video, it's going to pop up on the screen right now. Instead of going through and selecting all the different layers here, we can simply use a script that the video will show you how to get. I'm going to be using that script right now. The script simply extracts all the passes or layers from the EXR file. You open it up right here and you just hit OK. The horizontal and vertical stuff it works sometimes so I don't worry about it that much. I just hit OK and then I organize the different layers that it outputs. The Blender manual has a cool little graphic that shows you how you can composite all the passes together to get back to the combined image or the final render. So we're going to be taking the diffuse passes, we're going to add them together then multiply it by the color passes and then add all of that together again to get to the final render what it's supposed to look like then we can go in and make changes to each of these passes individually so that's what we're going to be doing inside of fusion so first off let's lay out all the passes in a way that makes sense here i'm simply deleting the passes and trying this again but choosing the horizontal option once more it usually works a second time around so i gave it a shot and here it is I like to select all of my passes and to go to show and then show picture tiles. That way I can have a look at them and preview them before adding them to the render view. We can drag a few passes into viewer 1 here and we can see what they look like. You can see that here for alpha it turns red and we get an error and that's just a naming convention issue inside of resolve well, from blender to resolve. So to fix this, we gotta go over to the channels where you can see that nothing is selected. We just gotta hit alpha and select our alpha channel and there we go. For the time being, we can move the alpha, the shadow and the ambient occlusion channels out of the way because we're gonna be working with those later on. Here you can see the noise that's in the ambient occlusion channel. And this is because I didn't pipe it through the denoise node and then pipe it into the file output. So. Like I said before in the last video, ensure that you do that to not get any noise. Okay, let's start laying these layers out in a way that makes sense. What I like to do is start with the diffuse, then the glossy, and then the transparent. For each, I'm going to be doing direct, indirect, and then color. Laying out all the layers first, it makes it easier to composite, and it makes it a lot easier to read it once you get back later on. Right here, I have the diffuse passes ready. What you want to do is connect the output of the indirect pass to the output of the direct pass. This will automatically create a merge node, placing the node you clicked on first in the foreground and the one last in the background. Fun fusion fact, the orange triangles usually mean background, the green triangles usually mean foreground, the blue ones usually mean for masking, and the squares that are gray are for outputs. That will come in handy if you didn't know. So now we're going to connect the color node to the output of the merge node. In this case, another merge node. Referring back to the Blender manual, we need to switch this over to screen because Fusion doesn't have the add option, but they do the same thing. Here we can see the two nodes merge together. And then we must multiply the color node by those other nodes. So here we select it, we go to multiply. That's all our diffuse nodes merge together. Now let's do it for the glossy nodes. Just like before, indirect into direct and then the color into the merge so we put the color above everything else and uh, we set the first merge to add our screen and then the last one we'll set that to multiply here we go screen that's both of them together and then we hit multiply here and that's all the three nodes together now we connect the glossy merge that's on top to the diffuse merge we get another merge node Remember, this is where we add everything together. So we're going to set this to screen, just like the Blender website suggested. Now you can see what our diffuse passes and the glossy passes look like together. Once you get the transmission on top, everything is going to be looking just like the render. 
You could make this easier by copying two merge nodes and then connecting them at the end, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to just go through it. The next step is connecting the last transmission merge to the merge that merges the diffuse and the glossy channels. Now we create yet another merge node which we'll be setting to add. Just like the manual, we'll be adding indirect to direct, then multiplying it by the color, and then adding everything else together. So we set this to screen. And now these are all of our nodes together, and this is our final render. But you might think, hey, something's wrong. Let's add a gamut to everything and switch the, out, the output space to sRGB. And there we go. Now this is looking just like our render from Blender, as we can see here. Back up top, we've got our shadow node. And if we look at it, we can see that it's just a shadow with some alpha channel. Now we're gonna get, get the background in and add the shadow to the background. For now, let's delete the gamut. We'll be adding it later on. Let's throw in another loader node right here and we can go for the backplate image. Or if you have a video, we can go for a video. It's the same process. So here, we load in our image. And if you notice, our image is not 1920 by 1080, like our composition is. So what we're gonna be doing is adding a background node which will be 1920 by 1080 and then we'll be merging the image with that background node. Here's how it works. You can see that the background node is already 1920 by 1080. But if you want to change that, you can come up here and make changes to the resolution. Alright, so we connect the background to the background node, that's the backplate, and we can see how it falls in that space. Here's another thing, the merge node will always control the node that's on top. So like you see here, if I change the blend, it'll fade it out and fade it back in. What we want to do here is increase the size until it fits a 1920 by 1080 canvas. We can zoom in and have a look at the edges to ensure that it fits. You can see it just needs a little bit more right here. And there we go. Now that we have the background being 1920 by 1080, we need to add the shadow above the background. I recommend selecting everything and making a group. That way it makes our nose look a little bit cleaner and since we're not going to be changing anything with the background inside this group, it just makes sense. You can call this background. And now here's a very interesting issue you might run into. If we connect the merge to the background and we show this layer, you'll see that our car has no alpha. You can go back through all the channels and select an alpha channel for each of them. That way we'll have alpha in the end, but that is very time consuming. That's why we have our alpha node. So we grab the alpha channel in here, like I mentioned before, we plug its output into the blue input of the merge node and boom. This turns our alpha channel into a mask for the final merge node. Now it's time to get our shadow and add it to the background and make this whole thing come to life. Pressing control in space, we're gonna drop another merge node and we're gonna be connecting the shadow to the background. The other passes merged together will be connecting to the foreground shadow output to the orange and the other merge nodes we're going to be connecting those to the green. This places the car layer above the shadow and also since the merge node affects what's on top we're going to connect the alpha to the mask of the merge node and there we go now we got the car and the shadow. We're going to disconnect this merge right here holding the shift key and dragging on a node will disconnect it from the network just like I did here. So it's hold shift drag and it disconnects. All I did here was move things over so it looks a little bit more neat. Alpha on one side and the shadow on the other. Now is the perfect time to drop our gamut node. And before I didn't really explain what this node does. But essentially EXR files use a linear workspace and not sRGB. But most screens are sRGB so when you try to look at the linear image they'll add the gamma curve to it and make it look like crap. So essentially we're telling Fusion, hey, I'll put this no, as an sRGB God. image. And just so you know, no, working God, with a linear no, image for no, compositing is way better. No, it gives you way more control. No. But color spaces and all that digital science stuff, it goes so deep. That's a topic for a whole other video. For the record, I still don't understand this thing entirely. It's just that complex. Back to the video. Once we drop our gamut node, we're going to set the output space to sRGB. And now if we show that, we have everything looking the way that it should, just like before. Now we can connect our gamut to the background, and it makes another merge node, and if we show this merge node, now we'll see our image above our background. This is where you can start making changes to the CG. 
and you can go for that more realistic look because right now it's looking really good but it doesn't look as realistic as it can look I'm gonna be showing a few examples of what you can do to get it look better but it's, it's a bit of trial and error and each situation is unique like there's no one size fits all by the way here I'm holding the the alt key and clicking so I can um, drag and make a little like joints that I can use to route the, these wires make them look a, a little bit better so um, this just helps me visually so when I return to this project or a project that I'm working on later on the whole thing still makes sense so on to a few compositing tips okay so we have our different passes and here's the beauty of it like here I think the reflection is a little bit too much so I select that merge node and I bring down the blend you can see that it decreases that layer that has those reflections all right so if I take it down the notch I think it looks a little bit better right here here I'm dropping a brightness and contrast node and I'm putting it on the glossy direct and I'm going to be messing around with the colors and seeing how they turn out I can select the brightness and contrast and put it in viewer one so I can see the changes that are being made to it also the changes that are being made to the overall image you can see as I mess with these sliders it makes changes to just that past and not the rest of the image or even the rest of the car if you render out just one image and you had that to edit then you wouldn't have this level of flexibility here I'm adding a color corrector node to the stack as well and with this node I'm gonna be adding in some purples into the highlights of this this node here because you can see the the image itself has this kind of purplish tint to it so adding that to the car will make the whole thing match some more and look like it was just one image I'm not showing this part in real time because it's gonna be different for every project that you work on it's really just personal taste a few little rules here and there and a bit of trial and error to get the image looking the best way that you think it should look once I'm done with the CG areas I'm gonna be adding another node color corrector to the end of everything so this is gonna color correct the CG and also the background and I'm gonna be making some overall changes here that should be the final touches that blend the entire thing together Here I just made another merge node and I'm plugging the ambient occlusion into the green input for the merge node that puts it on top of the car. I switched the blending mode to multiply because that's most likely how you'll be using ambient occlusion. You can also turn it down to get rid of some of that darkness that it adds to the overall image. Here I'm connecting the alpha out into the mask for the ambient occlusion that way it gains some alpha and we don't have a black image. After messing with the image some more, I'm going to be adding some blur and a film grain node. That way the car has some noise and is a little less sharp, so it more matches the image that you get from a real camera. With all that done, we're going to add a saver node, and we can now save out our file. In this case, it's going to be a picture, but if you did a video, then obviously you're going to save it as an MP4 or something like that. Now we can compare the two renders, and like you can see, the one on the right it looks a whole lot better, and it looks more realistic. The concept is really simple, but you can always build on it and produce some really great looking images and videos. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below, and if you have any ideas for a future video, let me know as well. Peace.